Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. This is actually a pretty special episode today and the reason why is we're going to perform a function in vMix UTC that is not currently available uh, in the most recent version of vMix UTC. Within the vMix UTC community there's some very very bright people and one of those uh, uh, persons is this gentleman right here that has his own YouTube channel. It's called Instant Replay Go. And this uh, gentleman's name is Wesley Fernandez. And he is a very, very bright individual. And he has actually added some functions to vMix UTC. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to expand on the work that he's done. And I'm going to use this graphic right here. And it's a football graphic. And what we're going to do is the function that we're going to utilize today that isn't currently available in vMix UTC is the set color function. Up to this point, uh, we could only manipulate things like images and text. We could set visible off and on on images. We could set uh, visible off and on on texts. Uh, we could do a lot of different things with uh, sources and images, but to this point, we really couldn't do anything with a lot of the assets uh, in GT Title Designer. So now, anything that you create in GT Title Designer, whether it be a rectangle, a square, you can manipulate the color in that now uh, within vMix UTC. And just to give you an overview of, of what we're going to do today, and as always, I'm going to show you step by step how we do this. We're going to be able to, and, and this is something that's really cool that I noticed on some of the network graphics, how they show possession. They don't put a, a football or an image next to the team that has possession. What they'll do is they'll bring in the team's uh, color and over here on the down and distance portion, they'll also put that same color there. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how we do that with visitor possession. You can see how for North Odom, their color is blue and the down and distance becomes blue. And then for the home possession, the DeSales coats are orange. And you can see how that background color becomes orange and how the down and distance becomes orange. We'll go ahead and reset those background colors. Something else we're going to do is with uh, the penalty flag. You can see how that background color turns yellow. Before what I would have to do is I would have to bring in a image, a yellow image and turn that off and on. I don't have to anymore. All I can do is go to this background image right here, change this background image to yellow, bring the text in but I have to turn the time off. So I'll turn the time off, I'll bring the text in, I'll turn the background yellow, and we'll show you how we do that uh, a little bit later on in the tutorial. And then the last thing that I'm gonna show you how to do today are these timeouts, turning these timeouts off and on. You can see each team has three timeouts, timeout off, timeout off, timeout off, and then we can turn them back on. And really all I'm doing is that shape that I made right here, the fill color that I use for that is white, and all I'm doing is changing it to the same color as the background, so it looks like we're taking that time out away when all we're really doing is we're turning it the same color as the background. So that was kind of neat. So we're going to show you how to do this today and so much more on today's episode of One Man Stream. If you stick around to the very end, I'm going to show you, uh, this is actually a mobile unit that I made. Uh, these are three lapel monitors right here. Underneath there is a uh, Netgear uh, M4, uh, M4250 switch. And then there's also a NUC Hades Canyon underneath here. And this is a totally contained unit. And uh, what this allowed me to do is it allowed me to really limit the amount of gear that I take to the site now. Because really and truly all I have to do is bring this out. Uh, put this thing together and uh, we're ready to go. If you get a chance, please stop by our website. That is onemanstream.com where we have our graphics, our vMix UTC controllers, and much more. And I just want to say thank you for all those uh, that have stopped by and supported One Man Stream. I truly do appreciate that. So the first thing that we need to do today, and I'm going to include this file uh, in the uh, show notes in the description. But the first thing we need to do today is we need to replace the functions folder in vMix UTC. Well, you might say, I don't know where that uh, folder is. Well, I'm going to show you where that folder is. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the folder that you downloaded, the vMix UTC folder, and it's this folder right here. Uh, this actually uh, comes as a zipped folder, and you can see that it's already unzipped. So I'm going to double click on this, 
And this is what you're looking for right here where it says functions. This is the one that you want to delete and you're going to replace it with the one that I have listed in the show notes for this tutorial. So all you do is you're going to delete this one right here and you're going to replace it uh, with the other functions folder that I have listed in the show notes. So what does this allow you to do that you weren't able to do before? Well, we're going to show you that right now. What this allows us to do now is we can change the fill color source in the title uh, using the hexadecimal um, HTML format. And the function is going to be called set color. And the function is going to look like this. It's going to say set color, then the input, and then the index, and then the value and the value is the hexadecimal color and this is the function uh, that Wesley has incorporated uh, in the functions with Femix UTC. So let me show you what this is actually talking about. Okay so this is the function we were talking about and this is our uh, Vmix UTC setup for today's demonstration. So I'm going to show you exactly what uh, what I'm talking about here. So we're going to make us a button widget. I'm going to put it right up here at the top so we can see it and we're going to move this right up here. And if you look right here, when we add the script, we're going to type in set color. And when we do, this information populates. So the very first one here is where it says function is set color. This command is actually our function, so this is set color. The input that we're going to use is this one right here. This is our new football graphic that we created. And I'll also have that available at One Man Stream. And then over here is the titles, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the index. And you can see right here that this is just the text and the source. These are the ones that we've been able to manipulate in the past. Well, we're going to be able to manipulate a whole array of these. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in this but, uh, right here. If we right click now and hit the title editor, you see our three tabs that became available in vMix 26, text and images. These are the ones that I just showed you. These are the new ones we're going to be able to manipulate now. So anything here, and these are mostly just rectangles and shapes that I created in GT Title Designer, we're now going to be able to manipulate these. Now, this isn't fully implemented in vMix UTC, so we have to remember what our indexes are because it doesn't populate. When we click right here, you only see the text and the sources. When this gets fully integrated uh, in vMix UTC, you'll see text, sources, and then you'll see colors too. But as of right now, it's only text and sources. So what we have to do now is we have to click on the colors tab, and then we have to remember our numbering. So this is, the first one is zero, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we were working on the home background fill color, which is this one right here, that would be index 0, 1, 2. So we'd want to put index 2 in here. And then for the color, I just have a couple uh, colors formatted uh, on my vMix UTC layout. And just for the sake of uh, this right here, we're going to change the background color to a red. So we're going to put in the number sign or hashtag then we're going to go ff one two three four zeros and when we push this button now that we just created up here let's go ahead and get rid of this and when we push this button right here that we just created right here we should see this background text turn red and it does right there for the home background color we see that where it turns red so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change that back and that's how easy it is but i'm going to show you the complete layout in just a moment so that's you know that's basically what we did and how we did it so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the a GT title designer. This is the down and distance rectangle right here. This is the down and distance text. This is the time rectangle. We can change the background color on that. This is the time text. 
This is the quarter rectangle right here. This is the quarter text. Then we have the home score rectangle. We have the home score text. We have the home team name. We have the home team logo. We have the home team background. It's that entire rectangle right there. And then we have the timeouts. Timeout one right here. Timeout two right here. Timeout three right here. And these are all rectangles under format. All I did is I used the radius function here. I made the uh, X radius five and the Y radius five and it rounded these edges over for us. So then we'll go down here to the rest of the graphic. This is visiting score rectangle right here. Visiting score. Visiting team name. Visiting team logo. Visiting team background, which is this entire rectangle right here. And then we have the timeouts, timeout one. Timeout two and timeout three. And then we have the uh, logo right here, the sponsor logo. And then we have the main text, which is this entire background right here. So and I've, had, I've made several tutorials on how to create these graphics. If you want to watch uh, one of those tutorials, and it will show you step by step how we create this graphic, but that's not really what this tutorial here today is about. Today's tutorial is about how uh, to set the color change effect. So now let's go to our VMix UTC layout. For the uh, visiting team name right here, we'll look behind the button. And this is actually a text filled widget. We have it mapped to our football graphic. And then, uh, well, you hit these drop down menus here and it's going to show you all the assets or all the inputs that you have uh, within your vMix production. This is the one we're dealing with today, this football uh, 2023 graphic uh, with background color change. And then these are all the items uh, that we can change, uh, the text items and the source items. But remember, um, we can now do the color change items as well. So we chose visiting name for this one. As you can guess, for this one right here, it's going to be the exact same thing, but on this one, we chose the home team name. Again, it is a text filled widget. On these right here, for the visiting text color and the home text color, we're using the function or the function command interchangeable set text color, and. Uh, when we do the set text color, this is actually one that's already fully integrated with VMix UTC, so we can click on the titles. You can see right here where we're changing the text color for the visiting team name. And uh, let's see what that does. You can see where it's black. And we'll just change that back real quick to white. And we'll click that button again. And our text color goes to white. We did the exact, exact same thing for home text color. Except this time, under the title menu, you can see where it's number five. So we want to make sure we have it set to home team name, which we do. Um, visiting background color, this is the one where we're using our new function, our set color. And uh, in order to find out what the indexes are, you have to bring the graphic up in preview and right click and then you can go to the colors tab and it'll tell you uh, what all your indexes are there remember the first index is zero but this one right here is index six let's go ahead and click on that you can see our background color turns to blue we'll reset it um, same thing for this one here set color again uh, we have this color set to this right here, which if you look up here, you can see that that's going to be orange. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see it does change to orange. And all I'm doing right here on this reset button, and I'll go ahead and show you that, 
I'm just setting it back to the original color and that original color is one that I chose it's a light gray and that's what this hexadecimal code is right here so all we're doing is we're setting the home team score the visiting team score and then right here this is the background uh, for the uh, timer because when we put up the flag we want we change that to yellow and when we want to reset everything we want to set that one back to its original color and its original color right here is black you can see right here it's black so this is how we reset all the uh, background fields so now let's dive into this one that is a home team possession so what did we do here well in order to help with this um, explanation i'm going to go ahead and bring in this look right here and i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on the title editor and then this is going to get kind of busy here i'm going to slide this right here okay so the first thing we did was we set color for index two index two this is zero one two index two is the home team background so we're going to set the home team background to the gray and we would do this because this is visitor possession so we this is what we'd have to do is we'd have to set it back to its original color uh, because when it uh, when the home team has possession their background color is going to change to the blue so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the home team color back to the gray and then we're going to set the color on index six which is zero one two three four five six for the visiting background color we're going to set that to blue and that's what that hexadecimal source is and then we're going to set the color for index source zero which is the down and distance we're also going to set it to the blue so we push that one button we're going to set the home team color back to the original gray and then we're going to put that blue color in the visiting team background color and in the down and distance background color so let's go to this next one here which is home possession we're going to click on that we're going to bring it over as well and what's going on with home possession well we're going to set the color of index zero and index zero is the down and distance we're going to set it to this color right here and as you remember a moment ago this color right here is orange we're also going to set the color to index six and index six is the visiting team we're going to set it set it back to that original light gray and then we're going to set the color for index two zero one two which is the home background color we're also going to set that home background color to orange so let's go ahead and click these buttons we're going to click this one right here for visiting possession and you can see where the visiting team color turned to blue and the down and distance turns to blue so now you know that the home team or the visiting team has possession we're going to go to home team possession and several things happen there the background color to the visiting team turned back to the original gray and then the home team background color turned orange and then the down and distance turned to orange so now you know that the home team has possession so let's go ahead and go back to visiting uh, possession you can see where the home team background turns to the gray and then the visiting team background and the down and distance turns to blue and now we know the visiting team has possession let's go ahead and reset those and then go with the flag there's been a flag on the play so what we do is we turn the time background to yellow and then we bring in the flag text so let's take a look at that button let's bring this over here again so let's see what's going on behind the flag button and we have a lot going on behind the flag button well the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the color of index one index one remember this is zero this is one index one is the time rectangle and we're going to set it to this color right here represents yellow so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our old friend set x visible off for index two and index two is the time text so we're going to turn the time text off and make sure that uh, and this will become available when uh, the set color is fully integrated right here we only have the choices of 
text or image, and we know image is synonymous with source. Once this gets fully integrated from this drop down menu, we'll also have color. And then we'll also be able to adjust it from this uh, uh, title index button right here. But for right now, we just have to use the workaround that I showed you. But make sure this uh, the type always has to correspond with uh, the type that you're working with. So if we would leave this as image, it wouldn't work because we're actually manipulating text. So we have to make sure this says text right here. The next thing we're going to do is set X visible on on index 0. Index 0 is the flag text, so we're going to turn that on. And you can see we do have this set to text. Then we're going to bring in the timer function. We're going to leave that on for 8,000 milliseconds or 8 seconds. And then we're going to go back and we're going to start undoing some things. We are going to set X visible off on index 0. Once again, index 0 is the flag text. Then we're going to set the color to index 1, 0, 1. We're going to uh, set the uh, time rectangle. We're going to set that back to this, which is black. And then we're going to set X visible on for text 2, which is the time text. So we're going to bring the time text back on. So we do have quite a few things going on there. So let's go ahead once again, and we're going to push the flag. There we go. You can see where the background changes yellow. The flag text comes in. The time text goes away. And then you can see after eight seconds, the background turns black. The time text comes back in and the flag text goes away. The last thing I want to show you today are these timeouts and how we do that. So we're going to go back to this. And then I'm going to click on the first timeout. And I'm going to bring that over here. So all we're doing is we're doing the set color. And then we're doing index 5. So we've got to go over here to color. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This corresponds to home timeout 1. Home timeout 1, what we're going to do is we're going to set the color to black. Right now we have it set to white. But when we push the button, we're going to set it to black. It's going to make it the same color as the background. And it's going to make, look, make it look like it vanishes. For this next one, I'm going to show you the button that says Home Timeout 1 On. So what we do for Home Timeout 1 On, set color, index 5. Again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is Home Timeout 1. We're going to set the color to this. And this color right here is white. So we're going to push this button right here to turn the timeout off. You can see that it goes away. All we did was change the color to black, to making it the same color as the background. We're going to click this on button, and that's how easy it is. Okay, that will conclude our tutorial today where we talked about how to now how that now we can change the background color for any object that we create in uh, GT Title Designer. I think you can see the possibilities for this. It's going to be really, really cool what you're able to accomplish uh, using uh, this new function, Set Color. Now, for those of you that did st uh, stick around to the very end, I'm going to give you a little uh, glimpse of my, uh, my little portable case uh, that I created. This is actually the, the power supply. I actually use this. This is something that you would generally use for an RV. All I did was I connected this to a, um, a power conditioner. Uh, I did some reading before I built this, and uh, just a regular power strip sometimes added hum and whatnot uh, to your uh, production. So what I did is I, I used a uh, power conditioner, and I have had no issues uh, whatsoever uh, up to this point. Uh, this is the other side of it. I actually have a plug over there, and this is what I plug a power strip to uh, so that I can run uh, my mixer and some of my uh, uh, cameras and uh, some other things that I use during the production. This right here are all the uh, Ethernet ports. Uh, these are waterproof uh, connectors. They're actually used uh, for boating, uh, but I incorporated those. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have another one that I've added right here, which is my main one, which is seven. I have an eight port uh, Netgear M4250 switch, uh, but one of them is an internal connection uh, uh, to the Hades Canyon NUC that I have. 
And this is what it looks like. These are uh, lapel monitors. They're not very expensive. I think these are about $99 a piece on Amazon. Um, I did, since this is totally enclosed, I did put a vent in here, and then I have uh, two fans that circulate. Uh, this is actually the air coming in, and the uh, fans are actually blowing uh, the air out of the case, and it's worked really well. These two silver things right here are uh, audio connections uh, so that I don't have to keep reaching inside all the time uh, to connect things. Uh, one thing that I've added to this that you don't see in the picture is I added a, uh, a pop-up like you would see on a, um, a cedar chest or a closed chest. Uh, anything like that toy box uh, I added that uh, because I was having issues keeping it open with the aid of the, uh, with the weight of these monitors uh, this right here is what the inside looks like I've done some cable management uh, since I took this picture so it looks a lot better uh, but this is the uh, switch right here this is my NUC and uh, these are this is the conditioner that I used right here um, but like I said it's a lot more organized than you see right here in the picture and uh, this is the final product pretty much this is the way that i use it during the production um, this right here this monitor right here displays my vmix this is my vmix utc and then over here is are my data sources that i brought in so that's my little uh, tour of my uh, mobile case that i've uh, i've built for this uh, this year again this was episode 77 this is background color change uh, we showed you how uh, Wesley Fernandez with Instant Replay Go had added that to the functions. And we showed you how to exchange the old function folder with the new function folder to give you this new functionality. If you get a chance, please stop by onemanstream.com where we have our graphics and much more. Thank you to everyone who has stopped by there. Make sure you do give us a thumbs up and a like. If you like what we're doing here at One Man Stream, and please make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. And as always, thank you so much.